Welcome back to Flags for Good. It's March, which means it's Women's History Month. So I figured it would be a good time to talk about two of the most influential flags of the suffragette movement. So let's kick this off by talking about the suffragette protest flag. Back in 1902, when this flag was first seen, there were only four out of the 45 states that gave women the right to vote. And so this flag, by only using four stars in the canton, shows that very simply and effectively. This idea of using stars to represent inequalities was actually used quite recently. Just last week, the Human Rights Campaign released their reality flag, which uses this same tactic to show that 29 states lack comprehensive protections for LGBTQ people around the country. So the legacy that this flag leaves is using stars to make a statement, which we'll see in this next flag. This flag, called the 19th Amendment Victory Flag, it has a few names. You've probably seen it, maybe because it was recently a U.S. postage stamp. In 1913, Alice Paul and Lucy Burns founded the Congressional Union for Women's Suffrage, which was renamed the National Women's Party, or the NWP, in 1917. The NWP's banners and flags were gold, white, and purple and they carried them everywhere around the country, including their very famous silent protests outside of the White House. The NWP described the meanings of those colors in a pamphlet on December 6th, 1913. They said purple is the color of loyalty and unswerving steadfastness to the cause. White is the emblem of purity, symbolizing the quality of our purpose, and gold is the color of light and life, as it is the torch that guides our purpose, pure and unswerving. So if you take those two flags we just talked about, you kind of see where this one's going. In 1919, Alice Paul had a giant purple, white, and gold flag that she started sewing stars onto as states ratified the 19th Amendment. As you know, to get a constitutional amendment, you need two thirds of the states, and at that time it was 36 states. So there was space for 36 stars on her flag. One by one, she sewed those stars onto the flag as states ratified the 19th Amendment. She became known as the Betsy Ross of suffrage. But if you're a longtime Flags for Good follower, you know that the Betsy Ross story is a complete fabrication, and I'm sure I will do a whole video about that. Of course, once Tennessee ratified the 19th Amendment, that was the 36th state. Women then had the right to vote in the United States, and this flag became super famous. Obviously, that led me to a pretty important question you may be asking yourself. Where is that big flag? So I decided to call the Alice Paul Institute and ask them the question. Hello, Alice Paul Institute. Hey there, doing a video about the uh, 19th Amendment flag. Do you know where that flag is? Like the actual flag? Um, where it is today? Yeah. I do not know that. Smithsonian, I think would probably be a good would be my first inclination. All right, I will call them next. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Bye-bye. All right, shot in the dark. I'm gonna call Linda St. Thomas, who is the chief spokesperson for the Smithsonian Institute. This seems like I'm shooting way above my belt here, but I'm a journalist making videos. Hey, Linda. Random question for the Smithsonian. Uh, I, I'm looking for the 19th Amendment flag sewn by Alice Paul. Uh, I'm not sure that's in our collection, but if it is, it's in the Museum of American History. Okay, so um, I should call so them. You'd have to call their press office. All right, Museum of American History. Hello, you've reached the Office of Communications and Marketing at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. We are still mostly teleworking. Do not leave a message, rather send an email. Needless to say, I still don't know where this flag is, and it seems like a pretty important flag, and it should be displayed somewhere prominently. I'm not gonna stop researching this, and if I find it, I will let you know here on this YouTube channel or on all of our social networks, follow Flags for Good, anywhere and everywhere. Hey, good for you for taking the time to learn a little bit about these suffragette flags during Women's History Month. 
Thank you for watching these. Please subscribe and let me know in the comments which flags I should explain or what you want me to talk about next. I'm Michael from Flags for Good. I'll see you next time.